Hi. In recent videos, we've been talking about the concept of something called duration, both Macaulay duration, and something in the last couple of videos that's new is called modified duration. These things are related to each other, and they're both uh, related to, for example, uh, if you're thinking about bonds, the average discounted time of payment. Um, and they're also related to something called duration risk. The larger the duration for a given bond, the coupon payments and the redemption value that you get from that bond, the more sensitive the price of the bond is to changes in interest rates. And for example, if the interest rates ch increase, that means the price of the bond will decrease. And if the duration is larger, the bond will decrease more quickly. And we'll see that in this video. We will apply these ideas to something called the first order modified approximation. It's sample exam problem number 66 from 2017. We'll be estimating a bond price with this first order modified approximation when we're given the Macaulay duration and we'll derive the approximation for good measure as well. So here is the problem. Krishna buys an n-year thousand bond at par, so the price of the bond is the same as the redemption value, a thousand. We're given the Macaulay duration to be 7.959 years. With respect to an interest rate, the duration is always with respect to both the payment stream and a given interest rate. The annual effective interest rate here is 7.2 percent and the assumption would be that the uh, the coupons would be paid annually as well. Calculate the estimated price of the bond using something called the first order modified approximation if the interest rate rises, increases to 8% from 7.2%. Okay? So the price is going up. That means, or excuse me, the interest rate's going up, so the price should be going down. We want to approximate it with this first order modified approximation. Before solving that, we're going to derive the first order modified approximation. Here's what it is. P of I, the price of the payment stream, in this case it would be the coupons from the bond as well as the redemption value. That's the present value. That is um, the original pre present value at the uh, given interest rate, 7.2 percent, and that present value would be a thousand. Minus, not plus, this is a, not a typo, minus I minus I zero, that would be the change in the interest rate, times the current price, times the modified duration. Of course, we could also we see that there's a common factor of P of I zero in there that could be factored out like this and multiplied by one minus delta I where delta I represents I minus I zero times, here's another notation for the modified duration, V bar of I zero. That's just another notation for the modified duration, another common symbol. It also has another name. It's called the volatility of the present value. And why is it called the volatility? Because the size of the modified duration affects how much the price changes. The bigger the modified duration is, the bigger this quantity is going to be, the bigger the quantity that you're subtracting, could be positive or negative depending on the change in I, um, but it affects the price more when the modified duration is greater. That's the key. That's why it's related to this duration risk. The larger the duration, the greater the price change is going to be for a given change in interest rate. We will also need to recall from the last two videos that the modified duration is related to the Macaulay duration. We're given the Macaulay duration, but we need to use the modified duration. So we'll need to use this equation that we saw um, in the last couple videos to solve for that modified duration. Okay, so let's go ahead and derive this first order approximation. It's basically just the um, linear approximation from calculus involving the derivative as well as the um, definition of the modified duration. From calculus, we know that the value of this function p of i, assuming as the usual thing would be that it's differentiable, uh, is approximately the value at the starting uh, value for the input i0, which would again be the 7.2% or 0 0.072 plus, that would be a plus, p prime, the derivative at i0 times i minus i0, where again this could be called delta i. Why was that true? Well, think about a graph. If you graph p of i as a function of i, it will be a decreasing function. And basically what this expression represents is the right-hand side of the equation of the tangent line to this graph at i0. If this is I0 right here and you draw the tangent line, that's got a slope equal to the derivative 
at I0. And then you find the equation of that line using that slope and using this given point, which would be have coordinates I0, P of I0. You can derive this as the, again, right-hand side of the equation of the tangent line where the left-hand side would be like a, a Y or P of I. Though it, P of I itself will not be linear in general, so this is just an approximation. Okay, I'll let you try to figure that out if you don't remember. So now we, again, just use the definition of modified duration. By definition, we know the modified duration, d mod of i, is the negative of the relative rate of change of p of i. Negative p prime of i divided by p of i. That does make the modified duration in this situation a positive quantity because p prime of i will be negative. The slope will be negative here. We divide by p of i to make this a relative rate of change, and again, put the negative sign in front of it to make this a positive quantity. You could call this the relative rate of decay of the function at any given number i for the interest rate. Okay, now just solve this equation for p prime of i. p prime of i equals by multiplying both sides by p of i and also multiplying both sides by negative 1 is negative p of i times the modified duration. Now plug that in there, replacing i with i0, and that will be the end of the derivation. Let's go ahead and do that. So p of i is approximately p of i0. Replace p prime of i0 with negative p of i0 times d mod of i0, plugging in i equals i0. The negative sign makes this plus sign a minus sign. p i d mod i times i minus i0. And of course, we can bring that i minus i0 in front if we like to make it match this. Okay, so we have now derived this first order modified approximation called a modified approximation because it involves the modified duration. Now we use it to solve the problem, and now it's just a matter of plugging the numbers in. Okay, so I0 is 7.2%, which you should write as 0 0.072. The I in question is 8%, 8 which you should write as 0 0.08. That will mean the change in I I minus I0 is 0 0.08 minus 0 0.072. That will be 0 0.008. That's the change in I. What else do we know? We know P of I0. P of I0, which is P of 0 0.072. That's given to be 1,000 because we bought this bond at par. That's 1,000. We need the modified duration. We're given the Macaulay duration, so we need to find the modified duration from the Macaulay duration using this equation right here. The modified duration at I0, which is 0 0.072, is the Macaulay duration at 0 0.072 divided by 1 plus I, 1 plus 0 0.072, 1 0.072. We're given, sorry about that, there it is. We're given that the Macaulay duration is 7.95 nine years, so this becomes 7.959 over 1.072. Do that calculation, 7.959 divide by 1.072. The modified duration is about 7.42444. It's probably a good enough approximation. Um, so let's go ahead and now we're ready to finish with this approximation here. So P of 0 0.08 is approximately P of 0 0.072, which is 1,000, minus I minus I0 is 0 0.008, times P of I0, which is 1,000. I could have factored the 1,000 out. I could, I could have written it like this, but I didn't, times, finally, the modified duration 7.42444, and just do this calculation now. So I'll multiply this times 1,000 times 0 0.008, that will be times 8. This times 8. 59.39, approximately 59.40. Take that away from 1,000. 
you get a price of approximately 940.60. That is the correct answer. Um, that is choice A from this sample exam from 2017, number 66. And it's pretty interesting. That's a pretty big price drop from 1,000 to 940.60. So if that going interest rates on these kinds of bonds uh, went up from 7.2% to 8% for the yield rate, uh, that's quite a loss right away. That would be, you know, if you were talking dollars, that would be a $59.40 loss right away if you tried to resell it. Okay, so again, modified duration, we use the first order approximation in this video.